share actionable tips to help you with these problems. If you have been following me, you know that I like to give you strategies that you can try. However, for this instance, I do want to make some time to reframe your thoughts about your child's defiant behaviors because if you don't have the right mindset no matter what strategies that i give you they will not be helpful and they will not work okay so it really starts from us as the adults right so there are two parts to this ig live the first part is where i want to reframe your thoughts and the second part is to give you the strategies on what you can do so let's get started on the first part when i did a poll and asked you what do you think of when you hear the word defiance, many of you said you think of the child being stubborn, uh, being difficult, willful, and testing limits. Now, if you had that mindset about your kids, that they are stubborn, then you will respond in that way, in the negative way as well. So you will take it personally. You will think that, oh, my child is very ungrateful. You know, he's very manipulative and very disrespectful. How can he ignore me? And I told him uh, not to do it. He insists on doing it, doing the opposite. And my child is out to get me. So you get very angry. You, get, you are frustrated. You're very annoyed. And you want to solve the problem. You want to fix it immediately. And you want to stop the behavior. So what do you do? You start punishing and shaming and forcing the child to do whatever you want to do. And this doesn't turn out well most of the time because both of you are into this power struggle. So I want you to take some time now, okay? Hopefully your kids are not with you, um, to put yourself in the shoes of your child. You want to control your child. You want to control the situation. You want the child to eat, to come home after school, to take a shower. Guess what? Your child wants to be in control too. So that is why when you ask the child to, you know, um, not spit the food, he spits the food. When you ask the child to brush his teeth, he runs off to eat some snacks. When you ask your child to do his homework, he goes off to watch tele uh, his um, TV. And these behaviors are actually very healthy. Yes, you hear me right. These impulses to go against what you, you tell him, they are very healthy and developmental for children. Because children go through this phase where they want to gain a sense of autonomy. In fact, not just kids. As adults, we all have this hardwired need to want to be in control. So that's where the problem lies. You want to be in control. Your kids want to be in control. And, you know, if both of you are not going to back off, it's just going to end up in an ugly situation. So let's start the reframing now. What I want you to think of is that when you observe your kids displaying these tricky behaviors, instead of thinking that they are defiant, I want you to see these behaviors as a sign of skills deficit. What are the skills that your child is lacking? In power struggles, a lot of times, children want to gain control. So they lack the skills to inhibit the impulse to want to be in control. So they lack that self-control. And the second skill that they lack is communication skills. Many times when they want to, you know, when they act out, they want to feel seen and heard by you, but they don't have the words to use. And even if they do know how to say it, their emotions are not well regulated. It's difficult for them to speak to you calmly. So if you can think of your kids as trying to pick up these skills and they lack the skills instead of thinking that they are stubborn and difficult, then your approach will change. You will want to help them build the skills. You want to help them learn how to communicate and how to manage those impulses. You won't be punishing, shaming, or hitting the child or forcing the child to do what you say because those responses, those punishments, they don't help the child build skills. Did you know that testing limits and challenging the status quo, they are actually what we want to see in our kids as they grow up, right? You know, um, strong-willed kids, they have these traits of success. In fact, there was this study that showed that stubborn kids are more likely to be successful. So maybe you're thinking to yourself now, oh, okay, my kids are really stubborn. They're going to be successful next time. No, but what I'm saying is that, you know, they display very good traits of um, good leaders, like they're better at negotiating. They are very driven, they're tenacious, and they're very inner directed. They know what they want and they go for it. So imagine, you know, if your child grows up and he's a marathon runner and you want him to push his limits and keep going and be very determined and keep training. 
And this is exactly what we want our kids, the skills that we want our kids to have. Or if, you know, your kids are at work and we want them to be able to be creative, innovative, you know, lead a company, we want them to think out of the box, then we will want them not to be obedient and listen to whatever they are told. We want them to be able to solve problems. So these skills and are what we want for our kids when they grow up and they're actually developing them now. It's just that sometimes it's very inconvenient for you and you can feel very annoyed because you know you have routines and you have things tasks to be done and you just feel so frustrated. Hopefully I have helped you to reframe your mind about your child's behaviors. So know that your child is good, your is the behaviors that need work. So whenever you see that your child is acting out, know that he is not out to get you. Okay, so let's see what we can do now to work on managing these tricky behaviors, but at the same time, develop these skills that are helpful for them when they grow up. Okay, so there are three tips that I want to share. The very first tip is also the most important tip, but the most difficult tip, and actually I've already shared it, is to shift your mindset about their behaviors. It all starts from us, the parents. So once you can understand that it is the behaviors are a result of a lack of skills, then you won't be, you know, putting up, matting out a punitive um, punishment on them. And at the same time, you will want to help them. So your child doesn't mean to be rude. Your child is not disrespectful. If you can tell yourself that. And how do you do that? You really got to read a lot. And in the moment when it happens, I encourage you to just pause before you respond. So if your child is crying and screaming loudly, unless your child is going to be in danger, okay, it is not an emergency, I want you to pause and count inside you. One, two, three. Take a deep breath before you start to respond to your kid. So, you know, some of you said that the child doesn't want to go home after school. So maybe the child is outside the door. Now you are in the home, you are at your house. Breathe and just watch and wait for you to calm down and shift your mindset. Tell yourself, my child needs help. My child lacks the skills. How am I going to build skills in him? You know, forcing him to do stuff will not help him build skills. And in fact, that's also not a time to build skills, right? You want to calm yourself down first, which leads me to my second tip. Focus on the relationship. Connect with your child. If you are on my mailing list, if you are following me on social media, you know, if you are a student in my course, you will know I always talk about how the relationship is more important than the messy house, it's more important than the spilt uh, milk, and it's more important than the spelling or homework or even the teeth, the cleanliness of the teeth, okay? Why do I say that? Because only when you build that connection with a child, it leads to trust between you and your child, and trust will translate to cooperation. If you are not going to let the child know that you understand him, you don't make him feel seen and hurt, you force him to brush his teeth, force him to shower, you yell at him, it disconnects you and your child. Okay, so let me just recap. The first tip is to shift your mindset about their behaviors, that they're not out to get you. The second tip is to focus on the relationship with your child. So you want to form the connection. And the third tip is to look out for win-win solutions within limits. So there are two things here, setting limits. You know, many times we think that um, setting limits is, is too rigid for the child and it's pointless. However, when your child is out of control, they need an adult to help them feel in control. So that's where you come in to set the limits and the boundaries to let the child know that, no, we have to shower, we have to brush our teeth, we have to buckle our seat belt, you know, we don't spit our food, I'm talking to you, you cannot be disrespectful. These are the boundaries that you have to set. While at the same time, you know how to speak to your child to come up with solutions to solve the problem. So of course, the timing has to be right. And when you speak to him, you know, getting him to think of what can, else can we do to solve this problem, you are actually working on his problem-solving skills and getting him to brainstorm, learn to negotiate and learning how to compromise. So there are plenty of benefits if you can be on the team of your child. You can even say things like, I'm with you. Tell me more. What is so difficult? Why is it so difficult for you to put the food in your mouth? You know, let the child see that mommy or daddy, we're trying to help you. We're not trying to force you. 
but we want to see what your problem is so that we can help you. Okay, so these are the three tips. Feel free to type in your questions. We're going to go into Q&A right now. So for those who have just joined us, I talked about how it's so important for you to reframe your mind about your kids' defiance. I, I like to put in quotation because I don't like to use the word defiance. So hopefully after today's session, you can take this word out of your dictionary. I want you to think of those behaviors. I always tell my students, uh, tricky behaviors that they are displaying and think about why they're displaying those behaviors. So reframe your thoughts. No, they're not out to make your life difficult, but they are a sign of communication to let you know that they lack skills. Okay, so what can you do? Firstly, shift your mind, which I've just mentioned. Secondly, is to focus on the relationship. So make that connection with the child first. And finally, you know, discuss with him about the win-win solutions that you guys can compromise and work together to, to make him, you know, solve the problem and also set your limits clearly. Okay, all right. So let's look at some of your questions here. Um, let's see. I think there's a question by Suni. Three-year-old was using kind hands at school since the Christmas holidays. When he returned to nursery, he is pinching and pushing his friends and he is becoming territorial. All right. Now, kids go through different stages of development. So your little baby who is so kind and, uh, you know, helpful will go through stages where when he is going through a developmental leap, when he is still learning how to regulate his emotions, learning how to use words to communicate with his friends, for example, this child, you know, he is not able to rationalize and know that these behaviors are inappropriate. It's really up to us as the adults to teach them. And the way we approach it will be from a point of building skills and not to use harsh words or punishment to make them um, not pinch or push his friends. So it's very ironic. You know, I have some parents who tell me that my child is hurting his friend in school. When he came home, I start spanking him. So you realize that you are doing what your child is doing. So we want to stay away from punishment. We want to stay away from, um, you know, f physical um, punishment to create fear in our kids. But what we want to understand is why is he pinching and pushing his friends in this case? speak to the child, continue to explain how we use gentle hands, but also find out, is it because, you know, since he returned to nursery, he has new friends, there's a change in, um, you know, there's a long break between going to school and he's too, still adapting to the, the transition phase. He's becoming territorial because he doesn't know how to use words to tell his friends that, uh, you know, this, um, or rather his teachers are trying to teach him how we share things, especially at three years old, the concept of empathy is still developing. So it's very difficult for you to get your three year old to know that when I do something for others, I make others feel better. It's not in their brain uh, ability yet. So they are still learning how to fix that. Okay, so again, Tell your child, tell yourself that your child is pinching at others, not because he, you know, is naughty. I don't even use the word naughty in my household, but rather he's learning how to communicate. Okay. Hana asked a question. Uh, always snack after dinner. Headache. How to resolve and get him to cooperate? Okay, this snacking after dinner is a tricky one um, for many parents. So this is where I urge you to set very firm limits about your snacks. Speak to the child before dinner and let the child know your expectations. In fact, I want you to ask your child, do we eat snacks before or after dinner? You can be playful. You know, let the, if the child says before dinner, you'll say, oh no, is it before dinner or after dinner? Now let's look at the snack cupboard. So this is where another tip I can share with you is to introduce this sign, um, snack corner closed or something, open or closed, where you just hang it or you just paste it at the snack cupboard. So if the snack, corner is closed, then the child will not be able to take any snacks. But after dinner, you can assign and empower your child to be in control and be in charge. You say, you are the one who's going to open the snack store now, the snack cupboard now, so he can flip the sign open and that's when he can go and have his snack. So you firstly you can make it fun, but also to make sure you communicate the expectations to your kids. Okay. Uh, does this work with a two-year-old whose language is still in the early development? It's a very good question because a two-year-old 
precisely because the language is in early development, it's harder for them to feel seen and heard. So what you want to do as the adult is to help your child verbalize and put the words with uh, what he's doing. So for example, if he doesn't want to eat, you can use words to tell him you don't want to eat your dinner. You want to eat the apple, right? So by saying that the child is slowly learning and that's when you also come in to let your child know that food before apple or you can say food first okay to so keep your words um sh simple and short keep your sentences short food first and let the child know that you know we only have that you might even want to keep the apple away so that it doesn't cause your child to feel triggered your two-year-old to feel triggered okay then there is the other way which is the body language so other than using the the words your body language matters as well so if you can go low and look at your two-year-old in the eye and let the child know that we are not going to have snacks or we are going to um, you know go to school that will help the child feel seen as well okay all right yeah, so uh, there are a few, few of you who ask me questions about children who can't verbalize. So know that the receptive language comes before the expressive language. So receptive means they are listening. Expressive means they are telling you. So if there's no input, it's difficult to get an output. If you are not using these words to tell the kids about what they can do, what they cannot do, they are not learning those words so that they, so they cannot express themselves. Another tip I can share for children who cannot verbalize is to use pictures so you see me share a lot about bedtime routine morning routines because there are pictures on it so at bedtime the child doesn't want to go to sleep you know the child is not being defiant the child is developing really well because children are meant to store bedtime that's the last chance for them to connect with you they will do whatever it takes so if there's one night where you give in and you let them read an extra book or an, uh, a night where you let them stay out longer, they will think that, oh, I tried it once and it works, so I'm going to try it again. So for this case, you definitely want to have a bedtime routine so that you don't even enter the power struggles with your kids. For children who can't verbalize, you can draw pictures. If you can only read two books, you can draw two books there. You know, you can put two check boxes and get them to tick when the books are already read. If they are insisting on, you know, extending bedtime, going to the toilet several times, that's where you want to be firm and let them know that we we have rules, we have limits, and we're going to turn off the lights at this time. If they start crying and, uh, you know, making lo a lot of um, um, behaviors that, you know, you know that you poss possibly can't put them to bed, that's where you want to calm yourself down first. That's the very first tip. And go over to connect with them. Let the child know that it's... It's hard for you to go to sleep. You're very excited. You want mommy and daddy to be in the room with you. When everyone is calm, let them know, look out, you know, the sky is so dark. Everyone is sleeping. The monkeys are sleeping. The giraffes are sleeping. We are all going to sleep now. So let the child know, oh, how can I help you sleep? Maybe I can play a lullaby. Yeah, and this is what you do in the moment. But the next morning, please make sure you talk to your kids about the bedtime routines way before bedtime. That is how you can help. You know, your kids know what to expect, okay? By the way, I have this bedtime routine YouTube video that you can go and watch. And uh, I hope that the tips there will be helpful for you as well. All right. Tinker says, when we talk nicely to them, but they still shout at us or refuse to cooperate, what do we do then? It's very frustrating, right? Like you, you want to be nice and you've learned, you know, maybe you learned from my account, you learn from other parents' parenting accounts and you, th and you attend this IG live with me and say, okay, I'm going to be calm and I'm going to speak respectfully to my kids. But when you do that, then they start, you know, ignoring you, uh, yelling at you. Okay, that's where you want to be the CEO of the family. You are the leader. You are not going to be affected by those behaviors. You're going to be very nonchalant about it. Stay unruffled. Tell yourself, okay, they are still learning. These are signs of skill deficit. Why is the child shouting? Why is the child not cooperating? Did something happen in school? They are not able to communicate with you. Let's try to find out and help them learn to express themselves. So sometimes you might need some, um, to wait for a while. So if you observe that your kid is shouting, you set your limits. We use our talking voice. We don't shout. If the child continues to do that, stop. There's no need to enter a power struggle or try to stop the behavior because likely both of you are going to end up, you know, in an ugly situation, like I mentioned. So wait, 
when the child is ready, go over to him. Of course, you must be calm and let the child know that you said some mean words earlier on and I think you're having a hard time. Okay, so mommy and daddy, we are here to help you. When you're ready, you can tell us what happened. Yep, just be very confident to tell him that I know you're having a hard time. As the CEO of the family, you know clearly you are well informed that your child is lacking skills and maybe there are some unmet needs that you know he finds it difficult to tell you. So you are the leader who is able to figure out and decode their behaviors, okay? Um, let's see. Siblings. My eldest is very jealous of his siblings, especially when I'm with them. I may not even be doing anything with them. He doesn't like me with them. I spend time one-on-one, -on -one, but he is still uh, misbehaving. Okay, so the thing about siblings is that they see the siblings as competitors. So when you have a competitor in in at home and maybe the home becomes like you know a, a place for competition you want to win you want to fight and you want to make sure that you gain all the power right and that is the reason why it's so difficult for the the elder kids or even the younger kids to feel loved when there are other siblings around so uh, Hui Yan, you did very well by spending one-on-one -on -one time with a child let's go deeper let's speak your child's love language okay again i have a blog um on the five love languages of children and i think that would be helpful for you and also to speak to him about his feelings talk about it it feels like you are jealous of your sibling you want me to spend time with you so remember since they lack the communication skills to feel seen and heard you give them the words and you help them feel seen and heard okay all right uh my kid is always negotiating and throwing tantrum whenever they can't get their way. Also, when I remind her about the boundary, she'll reply, no, I don't want. Li Shan and everyone here who is listening, know that your job is not to make your kids happy. It's okay for the child not to want to accept the boundary. It's okay for your child to feel upset that things don't go their way. Our job as parents is not to let them have everything their way because when they are experiencing these big feelings in them, you are actually giving them the opportunity to learn emotion regulation, which means that when they grow up, when they experience the same situation, when things don't go their way, they know what to do. You know, for example, I will always give, tell my kids that I've experienced it. I, I tell them that, oh, sometimes things don't go my way. For example, last time when I wanted to watch a movie and it was sold out and was so upset, or even I'll tell them situations like, oh, I wanted to buy the bubble tea, but it, they, they sold out of pearls or something and my let the child see that oh actually things don't always go our way okay so when the child is upset that's where the connection comes in Lishan I want you to sit with the child and let the child know that yeah it's very upsetting you don't get what you want mommy know exactly how you feel so say words like this I know how you feel I'm there for you you can tell me more I'm here to help you when you make these statements the child feel that oh mommy cares about me mommy knows me daddy can understand what I'm saying and it's so much easier for the child to cooperate and you know work through problem solving with the child so that you can end up with a solution that works for everyone okay all right what if I'm trying to teach my child math and he knows the correct answer but he purposely tell me the wrong answer all right this is slightly different maybe the child is trying to be playful or trying to be cheeky to you know let you know that um, obviously I know the answer and that's why she says the wrong answer that could be one possible case but also maybe the child has some you know feelings about doing math but he doesn't like it and that's where you want to address the the root cause of the problem why is he finding it so hard to tell the correct answer and I can think of some playful ways as well so instead of him telling you the answer okay uh, you can get him to you know put his favorite toy or lego figurine on the correct answer maybe there's like a multiple choice he gets to put it there so the idea is not for the child to tell you face to face maybe some kids just want to you know um yeah be cheeky and they they don't like it and some strong willed kids especially you know they feel like if they give the correct answer, they tell you what you want, then they are losing that sense of power. Yeah, so uh, we want to let our kids feel in control most of the time, within limits, of course, okay? I'll just take one more question. Um, all right, 
I have a three-year-old when she gets mad over something we asked her. Can you tell me what happened? She won't say. She'll just throw things and try to hurt. How do we encourage her to tell us what happened? Okay, so you can't force the child to tell you what happened, but you can provide this, um, you know, uh, like um, environment or rather the situation to prep the situation to make it easier for, he, for her to share. Which also means that you don't want to keep forcing the child, but you can say things like, I know it's hard for you and something happened. I'm going to be here. When you're ready, you can come and tell me. In the meantime, you can hug your bunny or you can sit beside me. And when you're ready, maybe you can tap me on the shoulder. So there are a lot of um, non-verbal language or non-verbal actions that your child can take just to help her feel seen and heard. And even if she doesn't want to tell you in words, you can encourage her to, do, to draw it out journal it out and and this doesn't happen overnight for kids to open up to us you have to build this relationship from young so even when you're like reading storybooks to your kids you can also share your own personal experiences and through the stories you can talk about the situations of the characters and get her to put herself in the shoes of the characters and this will help her be more open to sharing okay is it not recommended to use naughty in the household? I don't think that's a hard and fast rule, but personally, I don't use the word naughty because I always tell my kids that, you know, you are still learning. Your friends are still learning. Sometimes you'll say, my teacher said that the boy is naughty. So I'll let him know that I don't think the boy is naughty because the boy is still learning how to behave better. Okay? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that these tips are helpful for you. Wow, there are a lot of questions coming in. So maybe what you guys can do, right, for your question, to, to drop me a DM and I can compile it and uh, share a bit more tips. But generally, I hope that you get the idea that, you know, nobody likes to be told what to do, especially for strong-willed kids. They find it very unbearable. So you need to know that they are not out to get you. They are trying to assert their authority, which is very healthy and part of their development. Okay, so I just want you to share one takeaway from today's session. The reason I'm asking is because I don't want you to waste your 30 minutes watching me. I want you to make sure that you remember and you try to apply what you have learned from today's session. Okay, so this is what I always do with my students as well. We'll do a checkout where they will share their reflection and uh, we'll all learn from one another from their takeaways, okay? Okay, let's see. Jam Starry said, skills deficit. I also skill deficit. <laughs> yes, so that's what I'm trying to say. You know, um, in my, my the post that I just posted um, 30 minutes ago, I said that, no, you're not a bad parent if you like start yelling and controlling your kids. You are also experiencing skill deficit. You're still learning how to communicate well with your kids, how to stay calm and how to help your child feel seen and heard. Okay. Listen to the child let them feel seen and heard. Squeak mouse. Thank you. Connect, not control. Yes, Lishan. Connect, don't control. See, that's what I mean by we can all learn from one another. Um, you're on your child's side and your role is to help them. Yes, exactly. Reframe your mind first. The kid is still learning. It's not being defiant. Connect and listen. They are still learning. Focus on the relationship. Thank you. My girl is not naughty. She's learning. Control your own emotions. Share your own personal stories to model how to manage anger and frustrations. Yes. So I realized that when I start to talk about myself, the kids start, stop being defensive. They don't try to um, go against what I say because I'm telling my own story. And the entire mood just lightens. You know, everyone's just calmer. And it's easier for us to talk about exactly what happened to help them with their behaviors. Relationship. Yes, thank you. Uh, kids are not being defined. They're lack lacking skills. They're learning. Connect and focus on relationship. All right. When a team together. Lionel, yes, 30 minutes. <laughs> it's not, okay, I, I want to keep to my time because I know your time is very precious. And this year, I'm focusing on helping um, parents in my course to have more time to rest. Okay, so my coaching calls, I'll try to end on time as much as possible. Lionel, thanks for being here for 30 minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So take a deep breath before responding. Thank you so much. And I will, I will see you next Tuesday again. And we're going to talk about um, another topic. Um, so